Well, uh, we have now seen how we can formulate these uh, problems, lot sizing problems, uh, define them as an optimization problem. This is the mathematical formulation, and also how this is done in, in practice uh, with a problem taken from the textbook with ten, 10 different uh, periods, a setup cost of 132 and holding cost of 0 0.6. And the given demand shown here. Uh, of course, uh, well, this is of course much larger than the previous example, but still this is a very small problem. And in, in real life, these types of uh, um, of optimization problem, they can be huge. They can have uh, thousands of thousands different variables. If we should in include also the production, for example, we would have 10 more variables here. If we should include even uh, more aspects in a real life problem, we might have uh, lots of different variables. And in addition, we can have also thousands of different constraints. So these types of problems can fast be uh, the very huge and then of course it will be hard to uh, to formulate everything and, and write everything it will be lots of work and that's why lingo and this uh, other optimization uh, software have a programming language which we should uh, learn about in this course we will not go very much into details uh, the curriculum will be that you should understand a simple LP formulation for these types of, of problem you can describe it, you should know what this means, but you don't uh, necessarily need to program it yourself. To solve your um, assignments, you can easily solve it by listing up every constraint uh, like this and every, uh, and every variable uh, like this, because your problem is uh, well, quite similar to this one, 10, uh, ten periods. Uh, but you should also know about this programming, uh, well, more like programming language and this way to, to formulate uh, problems. And you can also be asked on, on your exam how to uh, understand and, and to explain such type of problems like you will, will see now. Uh, first, some... Uh, uh, well, I'll go through these um, remaining slides. Uh, and uh, try to explain how we can formulate the same problem as we just saw with, with ten, 10 variables uh, or, or ten, 10 periods uh, with a modeling language. Uh, such a language can also be found in other optimizers like GAMS, uh, Ample, quite commonly used. If you are continuing on your master studies, you will probably uh, learn this Ample language and Lingo, which we use here. Uh, and the point by using this uh, uh, type of uh, a modeling language is that it is uh, uh, well when the models will increase inside, writing the objective function and the constraint will come very tedious or it will be lots of, of work both to, to write it and also to maintain it and if, if you get some uh, different uh, uh, different values on the variables for example and solve it with, with different data. So maintenance of our model, like the one we, we just saw, uh, is complicated and also risky because when you have so much uh, data, it's very easy to, to do a small mistake. Uh, so now we will have some characteristics for the modeling language. And uh, if you are uh, well, familiar with uh, computer programming, Visual Basic or C++ or uh, Java or, or any other programming language. Of course, this is much easier for you, but anyway, it should be possible to, to understand it. Because here, we will define loops, which may make, means that you go through data, a, a given range of, of data. In our example, we had 10 periods, and then it's natural to define a for loop or a sum loop for these 10 periods which means that you should uh, execute the same command for all these periods. Uh, you have exception, which is uh, denoted as this, with the hashtag NE, another hashtag, uh, which means uh, can be used in loops to 
say that you should not include this particular period or this particular line. Uh, you have definitions of variables and constants denoted with the or uh, defined by the data command. And you have also definition of indexes, which is uh, described or uh, defined by the sets command. So we will come back and we will see this uh, uh, an example for, for this problem with where we're using all these, uh, uh, these programming commands. Uh, and it's, it's, it's in Norwegian, so I will rather use the example I have, which is uh, have English texts. <coughs> and uh, also these uh, files, uh, lot size is the one we, we, we can see here, and lot size 2 is the one with the, the same problem with the, the, the programming language. Uh, and the exclamation marks at the first of a line means that this is a comment. It is not a part of the program. So what you are doing here, if you go from the, the top, we will define a model with this command. Say that here we are defining a model, uh, an LP model, which should be solved to optimality. And then we define the sets with this command. And the sets is defined by the uh, TID, which actually means time in Norwegian, uh, which says that you should have a timeline from 1 and up to 10, which we remember in our example we had 10 different periods. So this set tells us that we should have a time with 10 different periods. And then we define the variables we are using. The R is the actual demand. The K is the setup cost. Uh, and since we have used the time period here, we will have the possibility of defining, of course, different demand in different period, but also different setup cost in different periods. The holding cost is defined by the uh, variable of H which also, in principle, can be different in different periods, if, even if it's not in, in our example. And also, we include the production costs here. So we assume that we also will include the production costs shown here with the C variables, which can be defined as uh, uh, different in different periods. And then the decision variables, what we actually want to find because all these are constant. It is given. It is given in, in the problem. We know how much the setup cost is. We know how much the holding cost or uh, also the production cost. But these three variables is what we want to find. The x is how much to produce in each period. The i, the size of the inventory or the inventory level in one period, and the delta variables, which is the zeros and ones, which will tell us whether we will produce or not produce in a period. So this is the set uh, part of this pro pro program, which will define the different sets. And to say that here, this section is finished, we stop with the end sets command. And then we define the data values. We have here defined the different, uh, well, this will now be the, the constant sets. And we can now define the data as the R uh, array or the, the range or, or, or the R variables will have the values as shown here. And we remember this was the demand in each of the 10 periods. 42 is the demand in period 1, also the same in period 2, then 32 in period 3, 12, 26, 112, 45, 14, 76, or 38. Uh, and to make this uh, a general program, we have all also the k variables, which now is defined to be in the range from 1 to 10. And theoretically, we can easily now exchange one of these values with another value if we 
will have, uh, if you know that, the setup cost will be different in a different period. But in our program, uh, or in our problem, we have 132 as the setup cost in each period. So this k uh, constant will then be 132 for all the periods here. But in theory, they can be different from for the different periods. And the h cost, the storage cost, is the same, 0 0.6 in all the 10 periods. In theory, they can also be different in different periods. And at last, the c variables, which, uh, well, the c constants, which is here set to be 0, but they can be included if we want to include the uh, production cost per unit and if this will be different in the different period, which is not the case here. So that's why they are set to zero here. And then we have are finished with the definitions and we will write the exact program which should be solved or run in Lingo. Uh, this command means that we want to minimize, this is a problem, we want to minimize the cost function. Uh, another problem could be an optimization problem or, or a, a maximization problem and then of course the min should be exchanged with a max if you rather want to maximize the profit instead of minimizing the cost then you have a maximization problem. In our case we have a minimization so we want to minimize the t cost function and the t cost function is defined like this. The sum command for all the periods in the TID range, 1 to 10, as we remember from uh, earlier in this program, we had defined TID to have a range from 1 to 10. So now we define the objective function here to go through all the 10 periods, multiply K by delta, this part, multiply H by I, this part, and also multiply c by x, this part, and add all these three factors together. For all the 10 periods we are have defined to be in the range t. So this is now the definition of the objective function. And then we go to the constraints. And first, we define the first constraint. And uh, since we don't have any i0, we don't have defined any variable for i0, we have defined the x1, the production in period 1, should meet the, the, uh, the demand in period 1, which is 42. And if it is more, the remaining part of the production will be stored as inventory in period number 1. So the production will meet the demand and eventually also raise the, the inventory level. And then we define this loop, for loop, which says that for all the 10 periods in the range of TID, except number one. This NE means that you should not include period number one, because this is defined over here in a special command. But for all the other uh, periods, all the other periods in this range, which now means that you should start from two and go up to ten, uh, you should add the x, the production, plus the inventory level in the previous period, minus the inventory level in the current period, and this should be equal to the demand. This is identical to the commands here, uh, or, or these uh, balance constraints, uh, when we have now excluded uh, period number one, because this is defined directly in one uh, exact uh, <coughs> uh, line here as, as a single constraint. So this is now the part which defines all the constraints which is balancing the production with the demand and the inventory. And we can see that we use now three lines here 
in the previous program this, uh, the same constraint set used 10 lines and if you have more uh, periods of course this will be even uh, larger but here we can use uh, three lines to define the same uh, and then we continue because now we want to define these 10 constraints and this is defined here still we have a for loop and we remember for loop goes through all the uh, all the periods in the TID range from 1 to 10 and we say that the XOT, the production in period number T, should not be larger than. This command means that you take the sum for all the periods for variable R, and it is the sum of all the R variables for all the 10 periods the sum of 42 plus 42 plus 32 and so on uh, <coughs> and this number should be multiplied by the delta variable which is the same as the constraint set shown here so the production should not be larger than the total demand in all the time periods multiplied by the binary delta variable and of course if this is zero the production should also be zero because anything multiplied by zero is of course zero uh, quite logical for a human but in uh, in a computer program you need to define it uh, this way so this these two lines uh, will uh, represent these constraint sets which you here use 10 lines to define and even if you were, um, well, exceeding the problem to be 52 weeks in a full year, for example, you still will have only two lines here, but you would have 52 lines in, in, in this pro problem or, or in this uh, definition if you want to write each line separately. And at last, this is also a part of the for loop. Otherwise, we could also define a new for loop, but here the, this is defined since you have the parenthesis here. This is also a part of the for loop. So we say that the delta variables should be binary. The last constraint set here, which is also defined as the delta variables here. In 10 lines, if you want to write each of the constraints, uh, separately but here we have only one line if we use the computer program uh, we remember we solved this problem and we found solution looking like this objective value 610.2 setups in period 1 period 6 and period 9 and if we now solve the same problem uh, here we will get exactly the same result. Objective value of 610.2 and setups, well, we don't see the setups here, we have to go further down. Because here you will also list all, here you can see the ranges from one to 10 for all the variables. But if you get, get down to the setups, which is the delta variables, we can see that we have setups in period one, period six, and period 9. So this is the same solution as the first program but found by uh, in another way by uh, writing more like a computer program in the language defined for this lingo optimizer uh, and solving the same uh, same problem as we here did. Uh, and as mentioned the curriculum in this course will not be to write these types of problems problems or programs yourself, but you should be able to understand and uh, explain what these commands will do. And if you will continue working on, on these types of, uh, uh, in these fields, you, uh, you might also 
yourself, get, uh, well, not, not necessarily in, in Lingo, but in another optimizer, maybe, uh, you should be able to, to write these types of problems. Because linear programming or, or such problems will be uh, relevant in, in lots of different types of, of problems when you are optimizing, which means either minimizing or maximizing an objective function subject to different uh, constraints. Uh, so, yeah, as mentioned, I have uh, a solution for a few of the problems in, in chapter uh, 7, which I will upload in, in Fronter. I will not go through the details, and uh, I will only say a few words about the assignment. which now you should be able to solve in uh, fully because problem one and two and uh, problem number three uh, is presented earlier and now we can see here that we have the lot sizing problem with 10 different weeks, the demand for 10 different weeks. Uh, you have a setup cost, 132 storage cost of uh, 0 0.6 which was the, remember, the same values as was used in the, uh, in the problem I have uh, used in my examples. Now, with this demand, you should find first the silver meal solution, then the least unit cost solution, then the part period balancing solution, three different heuristics, and then formulate the lingo prog uh, problem either with one line for each constraint, or if you want to try, you can also solve it with the, with the programming uh, commands, which I have just presented. And then solve it with Lingo and compare the results of the four different techniques here and give some comments to the solution. What is the difference? And the, hopefully you will find that the Lingo solution will be better than the others. Otherwise, you have done something something wrong because Lingo will always find the optimal solution if it is able to identify that. Uh, and at last, you should give some restrictions about the production capacity. Uh, and you can assume that it is limited to a maximal production of 100. And what does, how does this affect your solution here uh, from D? How does this information affect the optimal solution found by Bilingo. So you need to include some more restrictions, maximum production at uh, over 100, and then solve again and find the optimal solution. And what happens if the maximal production is smaller than 44 is the last question you have to, to answer. So I think we quit there. Uh, and as mentioned, I will uh, next week I will uh, go through the first part of, of chapter 7, which, um, which is the part called the, the explosion calculus, how we can find these demands when you have a complex situation with a uh, product which uh, contains of different components uh, and, you, and, and different lead times and so on. Uh, and then we will continue on the curriculum in chapter 8 about uh, scheduling. But I think this is enough for today.